Hey everybody, my name is Sarah. I'm here to talk to you today about one of my heroes. So, my hero I'm talking about today, his English name is Tom Porter, um, also known as Sago Guinyungwas, and here's a picture of him. And so, I chose this picture because it's my absolute favorite because he's smiling. And it's gonna be one of the things I remember the most about Tom. Tom is a bear clan from Akwazasne, and um, he is married to Alice, and one of the many things I love about Tom is how proud he is of his wife and his family. Um, he is the founder of what we call Gana Joharege, a Mohawk community in New York State, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of Tom and um, some of his credentials, but also about the things that I really admire about him. So, um, Tom is an author. He has a number of books, and um, I love that because I'm a writer, and uh, I hope someday I'll have a book. Um, and he has won a lot of awards in his life, so. A lot of his awards that he has uh, received are based on his um, involvement in the services that he provides, uh, the love and attention that he pays to the earth and the preservation of culture and language, um, and just being a very good role model of displaying courage and sensitivity and ambition. So. Um, he has held a lot of positions in his life, um, being a sub-chief, a director and teacher at schools. Um, uh, he's sat on the Mohawk Nation Council of Chiefs, and, um, and so he's currently, as far as I know, still currently, um, working in the uh, New York State Penitentiary um, and with the chaplain um, services for the native inmates in New York State. So um, Tom travels a lot. He's also uh, very well known for um, doing presentations and, and going around community to community, uh, sharing teachings and a lot of culture, promoting the language, um, and he's really, really awesome to listen to when he's speaking, and he's very funny. So he, in his talks, um, he always has to make people laugh, and he just has a smile that's contagious, which I absolutely love about him. Um, so some of the... Um, one of his most recent books uh, is called And Grandma Said, which is um, cultural teachings and oral stories in written form. Um, and it's so nice to read the books because it's written the way he would just be talking to you. So you can read it and if you know Tom, it's almost like he's telling you the story. Um, so I had a quote here that I wanted to share from, from Tom Porter. Um, and he was talking about how people need to find a spiritual connection to the life of this universe and embrace it. Include it in their spiritual, religious life. Not exclude it and not exploit it. Use it and use it for what you need and no more. So the seven generations will have something also to live. And... Um, I think that's part of what I really enjoy listening to Tom talk at any time um, is because he really promotes that uh, sustainability, uh, the preservation of our culture and our teachings, but also um, about sustainability and always thinking about the children who are yet to come. Um, so I talked a little bit about Gana Joharege. So 
Tom is known as the spiritual leader and founder of Gunnar Jorge and so in um, September of 93, Tom and a group of Mohawks from Akwazasne uh, had went to Gunnar Joharege, it translates to the place of clean pots, um, and it's located uh, just outside of Fonda, New York, and right near Canada Johari. Um, and it's the original place of our ancestors, the, the original homelands of the Mohawk ancestors. And um, they, our ancestors, like here I'm in Tyendinaga, so the people in Tyendinaga had to come from, from that area. Um, so somewhere around the 17th century when the conflict arose with the European settlers. And uh, so there was a, a dream or a vision set out for our people to go back to Gunnar um just to be where 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 our ancestors come from, right? So, so that is what they did in 1993, and um, they had purchased an old farmhouse, and I have a picture here because I just wanted. I really think visuals are really good. Um, this is one of my very favorite places. I love to go here. Um, so this is the farmhouse. So. Uh, there's like three farmhouses that have been joined together into one and it's been made into kind of like sort of communal living area there's also uh, the they have like the barns and um, they've planted gardens and have their farm animals but in their the setting of the farmhouses They've made it so that there's a craft store in one part of the house. There's the bed and breakfast in another part of the house. And then I guess it's sort of a house. <laughs> it seems funny because it's three houses. But in another section, it's more like dormitory area. So um, it has a big sort of like a meeting room and also a really nice big kitchen so that people can People can come there and they can stay at the bed and breakfast if they like, or they can stay in the dorm room and um, and you can go and cook in the kitchen and you can love, love because you're at the bottom of the mountain and so you can walk up the mountain into where the spring is, one of my favorite places. It's so peaceful and quiet, um, but you can sit on the, fr on the porch um, and they have a nice big swing. And just look at the mountains and uh, and so for me it's uh, I had started going there a number of years ago probably 2004 ish and um, and I had just luckily I was invited by a friend of mine to go and so I had went with her and um, and it was such an amazing trip that I just went every year after that over and over and over for a number of years and so it was kind of nice. I had the opportunity there um, to listen to Tom speak um, in such a casual setting where it wasn't it wasn't like a presentation. It was just sitting around and being silly, and um, and you just learn so much from any time that he talks. So so it's kind of nice. It's um. It's known as like a non-profit, um, I don't know, because it's not really like organization, but but it's a non-profit uh, building and its main mission, I guess, is to promote the community-based living um, and based on traditions and uh, culture and so, um, and based, basically to contribute to the preservation of the Haudenosaunee people. Um, and so it's um, a place where people can gather. I know they have um, a strawberry festival every year and um, it's a time to gather people of all walks of life 
and it's also used as a fundraising opportunity for Gana Joharege. Um, and uh, and it's so nice that they have you know different performers come in, lots of singing and dancing and um, arts and crafts to share and um, it's just a nice time to get together and, and visit with people from all over. Uh, so, so that's that and um, so I would like to talk I guess a little bit about um, why I would say that Tom is one of my heroes and I think the main reason is because Tom had this dream um, and he just pushed through any and all obstacles and barriers and made that dream become a reality and he follows his heart all the time um, even when he's unsure of where or why it's taking him in a certain direction he knows that he just needs to follow his heart and for me I admire that very much um, and that's what I try really hard to do in my life is just to follow my heart so um, that's one of the things that I really admire about him also he's very welcoming he welcomes anybody and everybody into his space and he shares everything that he has um, he shares his knowledge and he treats everybody like their family because to him everybody is family and um, I feel like that's what I try to grasp in my life and try to promote in my own life as well is that um, we'll never make friends if we don't talk to the strangers right so always to welcome people in and and understand that everybody has their own story to tell and we all have something to learn from each other so um, and at any given time a stranger can become your family so it's kind of really cool concept and I've seen it happen in my own life so I know that it, it's true um, and I really think that I've been blessed in my life with great mentors and teachers especially uh, people like Tom Porter um, because they've taught me those beliefs and I guess the morals and ethics that I have so um, so yeah, it's, uh, I think that the fact that Tom is very, um, very well known, very well spoken, um, he speaks his truth all the time and, um, he's very open to listening to everybody's opinions and, um, and everybody's story and he he just makes everybody know I guess because it's not really that he's making people feel but he makes people know that that they are important part of this whole puzzle of life so um, I was going to also leave you with another quote uh, from Tom and I had seen this on a video. I didn't get to see this one in person, but on a video. He says, when the sun goes out, we all go out. When Mother Earth don't grow food, we all starve. When the water's no more, we can't drink any water. We all die of thirst, dehydration. It's not a matter of religion, it's a matter of fact. So if nobody does anything, we're all gonna die. So all we are saying is that we hope everybody don't die. In order for them not to die, they have to change, including us Indians. And so he was talking about the environmental issues and the, the topic of spirituality versus religion. Um, and it's not about one religion being right or wrong. And it's not about um, anybody knowing more than anybody else. It's about the real fact of of nature and environment and how we can't survive without a healthy environment. And so 
Um, I really liked that quote specifically because I, for one, feel very connected to nature. I feel like almost everybody that I know anyways has a connection to some piece of nature, whether it's the water or the trees or they love watching the clouds. It doesn't matter. Somebody or everybody is connected to one piece somehow. And so I know that environmental issues are a really big deal. Um, we all see the changes that are happening. Uh, we all know how, um, I want to say a little respect sometimes it seems like we have for the earth because of how fast paced we are becoming and how um, disposable everything is in life now. And so um, as much as I don't claim myself to be an environment environmentalist by any means um, I know that the environment is very important for all of us and so that quote really stood out for me and so uh, with that um, I'm going to say that's all so thank you for listening and we'll see you again soon